One moment, he's a rocket man. Next minute, he's perfecting another rocket, his electric, super-fast supercar, the Tesla. It is a beast. It's Thanks. a monster. 691 horsepower? Uh, yeah, and it'll go to uh, zero to 100 kilometers in uh, 3.1 seconds. Whatever he does, and at whatever speed he's doing it, there's always a legion of adoring musketeers on hand. He's an engineer and entrepreneur worth $50 billion. He's the mind behind PayPal, which when it was founded was a revolutionary way to pay and receive payments over the internet. He then sold PayPal and founded a company called Tesla, which manufactures electric cars. I'm sure you've all heard of it. And if that wasn't enough, he has doubled down on his ambitions and he founded the company called SpaceX with the intention of colonizing Mars. Crazy, right? But if anyone can do it, Elon Musk can. And that's why today you are learning English with Elon Musk. But in case you are new here, I want to tell you that every week we make lessons just like this one so that you can understand TV series, movies, and your favorite celebrities without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. In fact, Rinat says that our channel is one of the best channels to increase and expand your vocabulary. So join Rinat and over 4 million learners from all around the world. It's really simple. All you need to do is hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. SpaceX is an astonishing achievement, but uh, you've also got your plans for Mars. The thing about the future is just, if, if we're out there exploring stars, it's so much more exciting and inspiring than one where we are forever confined to Earth. And a Mars mission? Yeah, so uh, in order to make Mars work, we, we need kind of the next generation of, of rockets and spacecraft. And we think we've got something that will enable people to move to Mars for approximately half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. Yeah. And you can get a free return to ticket with that, by the way. So the thing that most people say about you is the vision of the future that you have is quite breathtaking. And so many times along the way, people have naysayed, haven't they? I guess there's certainly been a lot of attacks. Um, one thing I've, I've noticed in recent months and years is that it's become uh, obvious to a lot of the entrenched interests that, that Tesla and SpaceX are not going to die. Um, now previously, they thought, well, they just basically ignored us or laughed at us. Now we're actually starting to make real inroads and they're treating us as a real threat. Um, and so the, it, is, it is quite daunting. SpaceX is an astonishing achievement, but uh, you've also got your plans for Mars. We use the word astonishing to describe something that is so surprising that it is difficult to believe. It's similar to the word amazing, but you can use astonishing to create a stronger meaning. So, you know, in the couple of years since you've come, you've done some astonishing things in, in terms of, of substantive stuff with, your, with both your companies. An achievement is something important that you succeed in doing by your own efforts. This is the noun form of the verb to achieve. Example, he achieved very good exam results. You know, just looking just for evidence of exceptional ability. Um, and if there's a track record of exceptional achievement, then it's likely that that will continue into the future. Mm -hmm. The thing about the future is just, if, if we're out there exploring stars, it's so much more exciting and inspiring than one where we are forever confined to Earth. If you are confined to a certain place, it means you cannot leave it. For example, we might say that a criminal is confined in prison or in confinement. I, I, really, I really think there's a fundamental difference if, if you sort of look into the future between a humanity that is, that is a space ring civilization that's out there exploring the stars on multiple planets. And I think that's really exciting. And compared with, with one where we are forever confined to Earth until at some eventual extinction event. And a Mars mission? 
Yeah, so uh, in order to make Mars work, we, we need kind of the next generation of, of rockets and spacecraft. We say that a product is next generation when it is more advanced and has better and more recent technology than a product that came before it. You could say that Tesla manufactures the next generation of cars. Elon talks about the next generation of rockets and spacecrafts. A rocket is a vehicle like the one you see here. A rocket is a spacecraft, but this word refers to other types of space vehicles as well. We think we've got something that will enable people to move to Mars for approximately half a million dollars. If something enables you to do something, it makes it possible for you to do it. For example, English has enabled me to make friends from all over the world. Do you know what else enables you to do just that? Well, the Real Life English app. Now, on the Real Life English app, you will make friends as you engage in short conversations with people from all around the world. It's a great way to practice your speaking without leaving the comfort of your own home. If you haven't downloaded it, you can download it from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, and I will also leave a link down in the description below. What are you waiting for? Get started today and start speaking and making friends with people from all around the world. Oh yeah. Half a million dollars. Yeah. And you can get a free return to t ticket with that, by the way. So the thing that most people say about you is the vision of the future that you have is quite breathtaking. If you describe something as breathtaking, you mean it is very impressive, exciting or surprising. For example, the view from my hotel window was absolutely breathtaking. And so many times along the way, people have naysayed, haven't they? Here he uses this word as a verb, to naysay. However, you'll notice this word being used more often in its noun form, a naysayer. This is a person who criticizes, objects to, or opposes something. It could be a person who thinks you're going to fail at doing something, or who says that something isn't possible. Maybe some naysayers that Elon might have encountered were politicians or executives from gas or petrol enterprises that said that electric cars were a terrible idea. I guess there's certainly been a lot of attacks. Um... This is a good sentence we can use to practice connected speech, which is how fluent speakers cut and connect their words. The most noticeable aspect of connected speech here is the linking that takes place between these words. He says, been a lot of attacks. Altogether, been a lot of attacks. I guess there's certainly been a lot of attacks. Um, I guess there's certainly been a lot of attacks. Um... One thing I've, I've noticed in recent months and years is that it's become uh, obvious to a lot of the entrenched interests that, that Tesla and SpaceX are not going to die. Entrenched interests are entities or groups with agendas. In other words, their goals and needs that actively fight to advance and or defend their agendas. Um, and previously, they thought, well, they just basically ignored us or laughed at us. To laugh at someone means to make unkind or funny remarks about someone because they have said or done something you think is stupid. I mean, you started Tesla with the goal of, of persuading the world to that electrification was the future of cars. Yes. And a few years ago, people were laughing at you. Now, but, not so much. But now we're actually starting to make real inroads and they're treating us as a real threat. Um, and so the, it, is, it is quite daunting. The general meaning of threat is someone or something that is regarded as a possible danger. Elon is considered a threat by oil companies because he's manufacturing cars that don't require gas or petrol as fuel. The question from the audience then is, seeing that you're, you're big thrust into Tesla cars, which has taken off 10 years in, your big ambitions for solar power, what kind of a threat do you think you are to the oil and gas industry? Well, I don't think we're much of a threat, I mean, yet, you know, yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he started Tesla, as we said before, he had many naysayers that didn't think it would be a successful company. Now that's changed and Elon and his company have made inroads into the automobile market. This means that he has had an important effect or influence on that market and he has taken customers away from traditional companies. 
You could see that Netflix and other streaming platforms have made real inroads in the movie industry and have made movie theatres become less popular. It is, it is quite daunting. If you say that something is daunting, you mean that it is frightening and that it makes you feel less confident. For example, Elon thinks that a world with more and more artificial intelligence is daunting. Is actually within the power of humanity to do. And, and I think it's something that, that it's, we, we must do. Elon Musk strives for what others might think impossible. Thinking ahead of the curve, he wants technology to improve the way we live for generations to come. Do you get the feeling that there's a lot of dystopian writing about the world at the moment, the future? It's very bleak the way the future's <laughs> cast, isn't it? Yeah, I guess bleak stories make for better drama. But you're an optimist, aren't you? You're hopeful. I am hopeful. What I'm trying to do is maximise the probability that the future will be better. So it's sort of altruistic, but I think why wouldn't you try to make the future better if you're going to be part of it? Is actually within the power of humanity to do. And, and I think it's something that, that it's, we, we must do. Elon Musk strives for what others might think impossible. To strive for something or to strive to do something means to make a great effort to achieve something. We have a much better chance of understanding the meaning of life and why, why we're here or even what are the right questions to ask. So therefore, we should strive to expand the scope and scale of consciousness. Thinking ahead of the curve, he wants technology to improve the way we live for generations to come. If you think or are ahead of the curve, you're the first to change to a new idea or way of doing something that later becomes generally popular. On its own, the word ahead means in the lead or further forward, but it can also be used with the same meaning of ahead of the curve. I could be wrong, but it appears to be the case that Tesla is vastly ahead of everyone. Learn more expressions and the way us natives really speak with our real life native immersion course. Over 41 weeks, we will take you on a journey of the English language where you will learn connected speech, cultural context, and lots of expressions that you can start using in your everyday life. And the best part about it is, I'm gonna let you try it for free today with our three part power learning series. To sign up now and get started today, you can click up here and I will also link it down in the description below. What are you waiting for? Do you get the feeling that there's a lot of dystopian writing about the world at the moment, the future? It's very bleak the way the future's <laughs> cast, isn't it? Dystopia is the opposite of utopia. In a utopian world, everything works well and is positive. In a dystopian world, everything is bad and the society is unfair and it causes people to suffer. Bleak means without anything to make you feel happy or hopeful. We often use this word to describe the future. We also use it to describe a certain day or a landscape if it looks like this. Then he says the future's cast is bleak. Here, cast is used as a synonym of to describe. For example, the politician cast himself as the candidate of new economic opportunity. Yeah, I guess bleak stories make for better drama. Make for means to result in or make possible. Example, this town could make for a very nice place to live. His past working experience makes for a good candidate for the position in the company. But you're an optimist, aren't you? You're hopeful. I am hopeful. What I'm trying to do is maximise the probability that the future will be better. So it's sort of altruistic, but I think... If you practise altruism, or if you're altruistic, you care about the well-being of other people. Donating, for example, is an altruistic act. You might have noticed that this sentence is grammatically incorrect. What I'm trying to do is maximise the probability that the future will be better. This is probably a result of being live in an interview and having to think quickly when responding to questions. What Elon should have said is, I want to try to maximise the probability that the future will be better. Why wouldn't you try to make the future better if you're going to be part of it? 
This utterance has some features of fluent speech as well. Let's take a look at this chunk where there's a reduction and linking. He says, If you're going to be part of it, why wouldn't you try to make the future better if you're going to be part of it? And here, instead of clearly articulating this consonant as a T sound, he says, try to, try to make. Why wouldn't you try to make the future better if you're going to be part of it? Now, I hope that Elon's entrepreneurship has inspired you to continue your English language journey. Make sure that you are subscribed to our channels, the Real Life English channel, and our Learn English with TV series channel, so that you don't miss any of our new lessons and you can continue learning with us. And make sure you download the app and listen to the podcast and follow the transcriptions at the same time. And also, you will be able to connect and make friends with people from all around the world. Now, are you ready to watch the scenes again without subtitles and test your knowledge with a few quiz questions? Yeah, I thought so. Let's get to it. SpaceX is an astonishing achievement, but uh, you've also got your plans for Mars. Think about the future, it's just, if, if we're out there exploring science, it's so much more exciting and inspiring than one where we are forever confined to Earth. Which option is closer in meaning to confined? A, safe. B, trapped. C, flexible. And a Mars mission? Yeah, so uh, in order to make Mars work, we, we need kind of the next generation of, of rockets and spacecraft. And we think we've got something that will enable people to move to Mars for approximately half a million dollars. Half a million dollars? Yeah. And you can get a free return to t ticket with that, by the way. So the thing that most people say about you is the vision of the future that you have is quite breathtaking. And so many times along the way, people have naysayed, haven't they? I guess there's certainly been a lot of attacks. Um, one thing I've, I've noticed in recent months and years is that it's become uh, obvious to a lot of the entrenched interests that that Tesla and SpaceX are not going to die. Um, and previously, they thought, well, they just basically ignored us or laughed at us. If you laugh at someone, you A, try to make them feel bad, B, think they're funny, C, show them you like them. Now we're actually starting to make real inroads and they're treating us as a real threat um, and so the, it, is, it is quite daunting. This is actually within the power of humanity to do and, and I think it's something that, that it's, we, we must do. Elon Musk strives for what others might think impossible. In which sentence below is the word strive used correctly? A. English is very striving. B. I strive to improve my English. C. I strived English since I was a kid. Thinking ahead of the curve, he wants technology to improve the way we live for generations to come. Do you get the feeling that there's a lot of dystopian writing about the world at the moment, the future, it's very bleak the way the future's <laughs> cast, isn't it? Yeah, I guess bleak stories make for better drama. But you're an optimist, aren't you? You're hopeful. I am hopeful. What I'm trying to do is maximise the probability that the future will be better. So it's sort of altruistic, but I think, why wouldn't you try to make the future better if you're going to be part of it? We are going to be learning English with a speech by the very inspirational Steve Jobs. This thing is for the everyman, right? That's our end user. It's the school teacher. It's the garbage man. It's the kid. It's some grandma out in Nebraska, right? So we need to make this thing simple. It's got to work like, like an appliance. <laughs> 